Addiction can affect anybody, but what happens when a CEO or business leader falls victim to addiction? Who can they turn to for help? On today's show, we're going to find out. Please join us. Welcome to My Healthy Mind. I'm Michael Hunter and this is Elizabeth Atkins. Hello. On My Healthy Mind, we talk about healthcare issues such as mental illness and substance abuse that people struggle with on a daily basis. Our guests include people who have stories of triumph because they have overcome those issues and now want to share their experience with others so that they can have a successful life as well. You, our viewers, are in for a treat when you hear the messages from our experts because they give us resources to use so that we, too, know where to go for help so that we can overcome as well. Elizabeth, what are we talking about today? We are speaking with Therese Marie, a recovery coach who specializes in helping CEOs, business owners, and executives. Therese Marie is going to share with us the very unique issues that executives face when dealing with addiction. Not only is she going to talk about being a recovery coach, but she's going to share her very personal journey of dealing with addiction herself, running a successful business, and helping others. In addition, we have Shannon Roselle of Solid Landings, a long-term treatment program for executives with addiction. And she will be talking about the many options that are available for executives who are dealing with addiction. So it's going to be a wonderful show, very informative. Please join us after this short break. Fine. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is. Ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. It began with my big toe. That was my first amputation that I had. Burger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. Joining us today is Therese Marie, who is a recovery coach for CEOs and other leaders who are going through addiction or alcoholism. Yes. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Therese, when we hear about alcoholism and addiction, we probably have heard that term a lot in our lives. But what makes it different for a CEO or a leader versus someone else? Well, there's really three things that I've noticed uh, make them a little bit different than the average person. First, just by the nature of their position, they're isolated. Um, they're in the corner office or the ivory tower or they're the, uh, the emperor. Nobody has permission to tell the emperor that he has no clothes on, right? Um, the other thing that makes it a little bit different is um, the nature of a corporation is a system that is based on efficiency, and so they're going to clean up after any mess that might happen, right? So they're getting in between the alcoholic CEO or the alcoholic leader and the natural consequences of his or her behavior. And the other thing that I think impacts uh, CEOs and leaders of organizations more than the average person 
is within the business community a general uh, lack of understanding of what the disease of alcoholism is uh, among HR professionals, among just people who work for leaders. Uh, it's not commonly known what the disease is all about. So, Therese, you have more than 20 years' experience in human resources. What inspired you to become a recovery coach? Well, I was in the staffing industry for about 20 years, and then I transitioned into coaching uh, specifically to help leaders in career transition. And what inspired me to become a recovery coach was my own recovery. I got into recovery. And I got into recovery because I was affected by the disease of addiction within my marriage. And it's a, a disease that takes down everybody around the, around the addict. I'm sure you've seen some of the statistics that talk about that. For every one alcoholic or one addict, at least 15 people around them are, are directly affected in the fam within the family, within the workplace. And that's what happened to me, was I became consumed with the behavior of the addict in my life and with that behavior, and I couldn't focus. I couldn't focus on my business. I couldn't focus on, on getting new clients. And inevitably, what happened was I had to file bankruptcy. I left my marriage. I lost my home. Everything fell apart. Uh, so I had to get into recovery. And I got into recovery for, into a program for friends and families of alcoholics and addicts, and I started to piece together my life. During that process, I also realized that I, too, am an alcoholic, and I got into recovery for that. So this all happened within uh, me in my business struggle, trying to put it all together. And what I found was I had great support on the recovery side from a, the recovery community, and I had great support from my executive coach, but he had no experience in recovery. Something was missing. And that's how my practice actually evolved was through my own experience. And I knew I was not the only business leader who needed to put back together their business life within the context of healthy recovery from alcoholism. So tell us, what is a recovery coach? And then how did your experience turn into you becoming a recovery coach? There's a lot of different definitions of what recovery coaching is. And coaching as an industry is an evolving field. In, to my way of thinking and in my practice, recovery coaching is helping the executive become aware of who he or she is and how who she or he is is impacting their business. And that takes into account their recovery and how they are working that. So it's, it's really a contextual thing. It's, it's self-awareness. It's coming to a place of acceptance of who you are and how you are, and then taking action to change your behaviors, change your mindset, whatever the case may be. But the real beauty of it and the magic of it is leaders and executives who are addicted, who are alcoholic, are very, very nervous about exposing their addiction. My relationship with my clients has to be highly confidential and private. It doesn't get touched by insurance companies. Nobody at the corporation will know about it. They contact me privately or they're referred to me. And they want to talk to somebody that will not reveal what's going on in their life outside the confines of the, of the coaching session. So it's really a, a process of self-awareness, accepting who you are, being in a safe place with a coach to work out possible solutions where there's no risk, where there's nothing at stake. They can't go into the office. If they're the CFO, they can't go into the office and bounce ideas off their CEO. That might sound kind of crazy to that CEO if they don't happen to be an addict, right? So it gives them a safe place to work those things out. Thank you, Therese Marie, for sharing your very personal journey. You're very welcome. We'll hear more from Therese Marie about the recovery coaching process. And coming up next, we'll talk with Shannon Roselle of Solid Landings about treatment options that are available for alcoholic executives. We'll be right back.
was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. It began with my big toe. That was my first amputation that I had. Burger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. Joining us is Shannon Roselle, the Vice President of Business Development for Solid Landings, a recovery treatment program. Welcome. Thank you. Shannon, tell us a little bit about your program. Well, I've worked in short-term addiction treatment for the last seven years, and I recently moved on to Solid Landings, which is long-term addiction treatment for everybody from ages 18 and up. And do you guys have a program that specializes in CEOs or executives? We have, we have special considerations for CEOs and executives because we realize that there are responsibilities that they may have back at the office that they need to maintain while they're in treatment. So we do what we can to accommodate them so that they are able to perhaps attend a video conferencing or process payroll or whatever their case is. But they meet with the clinical team to determine what their needs are and how we can accommodate that. But their primary purpose for being in treatment is to get better. So that's our primary focus, but we don't want any barriers uh, for them as far as any fears of missing important meetings at the office. So that's all discussed with the clinical team and exceptions are made for that. Mm -hmm. And when an executive is addicted to alcohol or drugs, who is affected by their use of those substances? The, the immediate impact is really on the family, so that would be with a spouse or especially children. Um, and then they also have their work family, so that, that assistant, that team that, that he or she is working closely with are grossly affected by the, the fallout of addiction. And the fallout can be anything from just feeling feeling bad, feeling sick, and not, not being as sharp in the mind. Um, it can be legal problems that they have gotten into, maybe a DUI or something of that nature, then everyone is impacted. But that family, whether it's the work family or the home family, is immediately impacted by any legal consequences, but certainly just the general behavior of not feeling well. Um, so we, we really advocate for involvement uh, in the recovery of the executive to involve those families as far as, uh, especially the immediate family. Um, the wife and the children really need to be involved in a 12-step program along with the addicted uh, CEO or executive. And that really stacks the deck for success of recovery, for long-term recovery is obviously what the goal is going to be. Um, and then if we can, if we can, and it, this is typically up to the, the addict or alcoholic, if we can somehow educate the people that they work with on things to watch for and things to understand, just understanding the disease of addiction, we can lower the impact and the shame that typically comes along with the disease so that we're, we're all just in recovery. We're all seeking remission and we're not looking at the behavior so much as understanding the disease that is what creates the behavior. And as you suggest that these 15 people get involved to help, is there, in the treatment process, is there teaching or education for them on how to help the addict or alcoholic recognize that the problem exists? Absolutely. It, and that's a great question because oftentimes treatment programs will have family programs and those programs are typically free and available to the public as well as the family um, because they're, they're just, they're classes on the education of the disease and how to put it in remission and how to support that person and how to protect yourself. Um, because if there is a relapse, then we have to have a relapse plan. And the, you know, the, the failure is not in falling down, it's in staying down. So if there is a relapse, then we at least know as a team how to assemble in order to wrap around that addict or alcoholic and let's get back on track for a successful long-term recovery. So when the executive does want to seek anonymous 
information, make an inquiry about treatment? How do they go about doing that? Well, we're all professionals, so whether they call a short-term treatment or a long-term treatment, anybody that calls me, I have a, a cell phone that is 24-7. Um, they don't even have to use their name. Just ask questions. That's really kind of a first step of saying, I might have an issue here. Maybe you don't know the difference between use and abuse and addiction. I can help you or the loved one or somebody in that family circle understand what are the options and you know what are the resources available if whether the the addict or alcoholic is willing or not willing um, it's really about starting the education and knowing what the resources are and then that addict or alcoholic is is always welcome to call me and and I can help them with my own personal story as well as that the stories of many others on how it's just a, a it's not that tough of a journey. It's not easy, but it's not hard. It's simple, quite simple. But um, there, are, there are very specific things that have to be done in order to find remission, and I can help that person confidentially just with a phone call. Mm -hmm. And you stated that the problem is not with falling down, it's staying down. So relapse is or could be a part of that person's recovery uh, track? That's a very contradictory a controversial way to say it um, because while many programs will say that relapse is a part of recovery, it absolutely isn't. Recovery is recovery. Um, relapse is a part of relapse, but often relapse happens well before the use. Um, it starts with a behavior or an anger or a resentment or something, not, not being involved in a 12-step meeting, not communicating with your families, holding resentments, and then it leads to the use. Now, we can prevent that relapse by having that, that, those families involved so that we start to see these behaviors and we can, we can say, hey, hey John, um, I'm noticing that you seem really irritable lately. Um, have you been to a meeting or you know, have you talked to your sponsor about it? And just by having them be knowledgeable of what a 12-step program is, they know what language to use to just give them a checkpoint so that he can say, you know, I think I need to call my sponsor. And we can prevent that. So relapse does not have to be a part of, of recovery. Um, recovery is recovery. But that's a great question. Thank Shannon, you. thank you so much for joining us today and sharing with us and our viewers the various aspects of treatment and recovery opportunities for CEOs, executives, and others. Thank you. And joining us after the break, we'll be back with Therese Marie and talk about more aspects for recovery options for executives and CEOs. Fine. I was feeling so alone. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is. Ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. It began with my big toe. That was my first amputation that I had. Burger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. First it was my left leg. After my left leg, it was my right leg. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Welcome back to My Healthy Mind. Today we're talking about a rarely discussed topic of what happens when executives and CEO fall victim to addiction. We're talking with recovery coach Therese Marie, who has shared her very personal story about addiction and her recovery story. So now, Therese, can you please tell us what's the difference between a recovery coach and a therapist? Therapists, being clinical, are trained to diagnose. Uh, a lot of, I, I like to put it this way. Therapists look at the past and things that have happened in the past and help a person move forward. It's more diagnostic based. 
It's more finding a problem and helping the person fix the problem. A coach is dealing with information and activity just in time. We deal with our clients on what's happening now and what might be getting in the way of them getting to where they need to be in the future. So it's just in time learning in the moment, whereas therapy is more backward based. Mm. And when should a CEO or anyone start seeking the assistance from a recovery coach and how long typically should they anticipate that process taking? They begin to seek the help of a recovery coach when they become willing to accept help. So typically a CEO coming to me has already admitted that they have a problem with addiction. They've probably gone through treatment or begun some form of a program of recovery. And now they would hire a coach to put all the pieces together, the recovery, the business, the relationships, all of that. Mm -hmm. So can you take, take us through a session that you would have with a client? You know, it's really, each session is so different. Uh, the, if, if I had to look at the, the big picture of what coaching is, it starts with awareness. A, 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 a client comes to the session with an issue. The coach helps that person become aware of what's going on in that moment by asking questions. It's like a football coach. They're not on the field playing the game. They're watching on the sidelines and holding up the mirror and letting the players see what's going on. This is what I'm observing. That's what a coach would do. Ask questions to bring information out of the CEO. And as the coach is watching the game, let me give you a scenario. In business, oftentimes the CEO and other executives are going to have a lot of meetings over cocktails. So if a person is in recovery, especially if they're trying to make that recovery as anonymous as possible, what kind of techniques should they anticipate learning when it comes to those kind of lunches, dinners, evenings, over cocktails? A lot of those topics are handled within the context of a person's recovery with their sponsor. If they're working a 12-step program, they'll be talking about things like that. But again, clients of mine, those are things that they'll bring up. You know, how do, I, how do I handle that? And it's different for every person. See, that's, that's another part of coaching that's a little bit different than training. There's not a book. There's not a playbook. This is not how everybody is going to do it. It's going to be different for each person. But coaching provides them just the space to work out whatever the strategy is that's right for them. And Therese Marie, do you have any statistics on the number of CEOs and executives who are addicted to alcohol and drugs and on the recovery rate, is it very successful for them? That's a great question, and I really wish there were statistics available. Uh, it is, again, this is not a topic that is being talked about within the business community. There's a lot of talk about statistics in the general population. There's, in, within the economic field, they'll talk about $85 billion are spent each year because of addiction, but that's a blanket statement. Nobody is talking about the percentage of CEOs or leaders who are addicted, the percentage of addicted leaders who are getting better. It's just not out there. My hope is shows like this and conversations like this will inspire people to do that sort of research. Therese Marie, thank you very much for sharing your personal journey and all of this helpful information that we're certain our viewers can put to good use. Thank you for having me here. We'll be right back. I was going through a really difficult time. I didn't want to bother anyone. I didn't think they'd understand. It was tough at first, but I did it. I'm glad I asked for help. I asked my teacher. I asked my dad. You can do this. Whatever it is, ask for help. If you're thinking about suicide or need support, call the Trevor Lifeline. Trained counselors are there to help 24-7. It began with my big toe, 
That was my first amputation that I had. Burger's disease, it's a vascular disease brought on by smoking. My fingers started to go piece by piece. And so now I'm a double amputee, all from smoking. My tip to everyone is, don't believe that this can't happen to you, because it can. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Stress, depression, and severe mental illness can happen to anyone. Team Mental Health Services has been helping those struggling with these conditions in southeastern Michigan. Within 24 hours of reaching out to our team, members receive psychiatric evaluations and begin the necessary treatment for recovery. It was towards the sixth court date. Um, I finally stood up and said, I, I can handle this process the rest of the way. And it was all because of the motivation and encouragement I got from Team Mental Health staff. Team Mental Health Services, because we care and you can. We've all heard the expression that it's lonely at the top. And today we covered a topic that is rarely discussed, CEOs and executives that are struggling with alcoholism and addiction. But we also heard very, very good information about how they can receive help and live a balanced work-life experience. It was a great show. One of my favorite parts of the show today, Elizabeth, was when we talked about the support network, mm -hmm. that for every person who is struggling with an addiction, there's approximately 15 people that are impacted by that struggle. Mm -hmm. And when those 15 people can get together and rally around that person and help the recovery effort, mm -hmm they stand a great chance of success, and that really moved me today. What about you? I agree with you on that, Michael, but I was really stunned when Therese Marie said there are no statistics to give us any kind of barometer on how widespread this problem is. So that unto itself shows the importance of having this conversation to bring it out in the open to inspire someone to do a study so we can get a grasp on how widespread the problem is. Yeah, and it was really cool that Therese Marie said that the anonymity is protected mm -hmm. and that probably lends to some of that statistical problem. Mm -hmm. But because people know that their identity is protected, then they can, you know, work freely through their recovery efforts and, and really uh, thrive. So that was really moving, especially from an executive standpoint when the pressure to do business over cocktails is present. Yes, absolutely. We want to remind our viewers of My Healthy Mind that no topic is off limits. We want to hear from you, and we want to hear what you'd like to see us discuss here on My Healthy Mind. So please send us a note at our website, myhealthymind.com. We value your opinions and your comments, and we keep your information private. So please send us a note. We appreciate that you tuned in to watch My Healthy Mind this week, and we look forward to talking with you next week.